Hello everyone, welcome back to the next episode. Thanks for tuning in again to the channel. Uh, we are going to continue our discussion on Airbnb's epoxy library. Uh, again, I'll link some of this stuff in the description below, or if you missed it, or if I miss it, it was in the previous episode's um, description to, to get you here. But uh, Airbnb's epoxy is basically a beautiful wrapper around the recycler view. Uh, implementation that allows just a whole lot more flexibility and abstracts away some of the boilerplate nitty-gritty code uh, from you the developer so we're gonna go ahead and uplift our application that we've been building here this sample travel app Senya to uh, now also use epoxy instead of the recycler view so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the readme here they have the um, installation instructions here so we're gonna go ahead and add, uh, well let's do this one at a time here, so let's go ahead and just copy this. We will go over to our app level build.gradle file. I'm going to go ahead and put a little com comment here that says epoxy. And what is the replace epoxy version with the latest version? 4.4.1, so that's beautiful. Well actually, let's just say epoxy version equals 4.4.1 boom and now it has a variable for it uh, okay so we implemented this little guy it says do this for the annotations and it is recommended however we're going to come back to that in a second replace it see the release blah blah, blah. Kotlin we are doing everything in Kotlin so it says if you're using Kotlin you should also add apply plugin Kotlin capped let's go ahead interesting I'm just going to say ID Kotlin kept, and then we're going to go ahead and just pop this in our project as well here. Um, basically, right under it is fine. Uh, okay, so that automatic annotation works properly. We'll get into that later. And then it says also make sure capped instead of annotation processor uh, in your dependencies in the build.gradle file, and that was what this is talking about. So. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that bad boy and go back down here and say uh, <laughs> kept. That should be about it. <clears throat> so we just make sure we're not missing anything else here. We're not going to use butter knife. We're not going to do that. Okay, and it just gets into usage. So let's just go ahead and sync this, make sure everything is uh, still functioning. And then we can get to the getting. Nice. Oh boy. Scratching my head on that one, and I just spelled capped wrong, I guess, twice. So once we spell it correct, everything should download, build successful, indexing, we are all good. So at this point, we have our Airbnb epoxy library uh, up and, well, imported into our project. And so we're going to go ahead and. Um, uh, import one other thing that's necessary for Kotlin uh, usage here. So I will link this in the description here, but as part of the epoxy library, they have Kotlin samples and all the way down here in the helpers, uh, they have a file here called viewbindingkotlinmodel.kt. And this, uh, we are going to, oh man, we are going to just copy this entire file here and actually add this to our project. Um, you know, as it says here, it's just a helper function or, or a helper file that they've made that uh, unfortunately does not exist in the, yeah, view binding Kotlin model, yeah. So it just doesn't exist in their package at the moment. Uh, I think I guess it's still like, you know, under development and stuff like that or not fully supported, but it uh, it works. So we're going to basically create this file inside of our, yeah, let's just go ahead and epoxy. we're going to just create a little epoxy uh, repo uh, sorry, not repository uh, package inside of our UI layer here. And we're just going to go ahead and create the Kotlin, what was it called? <laughs> the view binding Kotlin model it's gonna be a class and we're just gonna copy that and 
Let's see. So we are missing one more thing here. As you can see, this epoxy view binding uh, ID, it doesn't understand where it's coming from. Also, um, previously it had, as you can see here, the epoxy Kotlin sample .r. And if we go to their package instead of in the Java, if we go to the resource, the values, uh, there's an IDs file right here that we just need to copy as well. So we're gonna go ahead and create that. Uh, IDs. And then just like that. Oh yeah, sorry. And then we just need to import our own and everything is all good there. So all that we need to do really after we get the build uh, .gradle file up and running. We need to add this package or this file into your um, uh, class as well, and then or into your project, and then the IDs file inside of the values um, directory, and then copy and paste this in there. So don't worry, I'm going to have all this stuff up in GitHub anyway. So when you pull it down, the project should be in a working state. But just so you know, there's a little bit of uh, things that we needed to kind of set up because we are using view binding and we're using Kotlin and it's just not completely embedded inside the project, but have no fear, this works and is in production in many applications uh, around the world. So I would not worry about um, this being too much of a risk or anything like that. So we're gonna just go ahead and commit this. Uh, go ahead and say initial um, epoxy config. All right, I'll push that later and then to click the little drop down arrow. Uh, okay, cool. So now at this point, we are ready to go and actually um, use this particular uh, this particular library. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we're just gonna go ahead and work on the Kotlin models. Yes, okay. So we're gonna eventually go ahead and use our uh, Kotlin model that's going to look something similar to this. We can essentially translate all of our view holders into uh, models. They're gonna take all the parameters in as the constructor. Uh, we will define the view binding slash layout file uh, that it needs. And then in a bind function, we're gonna go ahead and uh, and and bind everything to our UI. So uh, I'm gonna cut it here just so it doesn't get too overwhelming, but we are gonna pick up the next episode where we will start converting our view holders to epoxy models, and then eventually our recycler view to a controller and reconnect everything to the UI. So I will catch you there.